And it's a great time to be an embryologist these days because we have so many exciting developments in our field going on with a lot of promise for the future of what we can offer our patients. My name is Sebastian Massenbroek. I'm a clinical embryologist here in the Amsterdam University Medical Center and the University of Amsterdam. But I'm also a researcher and uh, for that uh, I'm doing research like clinical evaluation research, which means that we try to find out what the value is of uh, medical treatments. Do they actually work? Are, are they actually of benefit to the patients? Uh, but all, we also do more fundamental uh, research to understand, for example, how these really early embryos develop. So in reproductive medicine we have many treatments that we can offer to women to help them to achieve a pregnancy. And of course IVF is one of the most well-known treatments that we have, the in vitro fertilization. But at the beginning, IVF was a really controversial treatment. Uh, it really stirred up society once the first baby was born in 1978. But nowadays, IVF is commonly accepted. Like I said, it has revolutionized reproductive medicine and at this uh, day about 1 in 30 children being born in the Netherlands after IVF. And we now have more than 6 million uh, IVF babies being born worldwide. But actually it's a great time to be a clinical embryologist because we see so many innovations now being reported in the scientific literature that in the end could translate into new treatments that could help our patients. Or artificial uterus that is being used to culture premature born sheep in this case, but in the end it could translate to humans that for example could be used to help premature or extremely premature born children. Uh, we see exciting developments in the field of stem cells, where induced pluripotent stem cells can be used to create artificial gametes, or for example, uh, to create artificial pre-implantation embryos, which in the end could lead to nice innovations in reproductive medicine. So for some of these uh, technologies, they are really far away. I mean, it would take decades to do the proper research and develop them into uh, treatments that could be offered to patients. And some of them are a lot of closer. But uh, in general, technology advances very fast currently. And uh, some of them are closer than we uh, think. One of those examples, for example, is the gene editing of MBRs. Two beautiful little Chinese girls named Lulu and Lala came crying into the world as healthy as any other babies a few weeks ago. The girls are home now with their mom Grace and their dad Mark. Grace started her pregnancy by regular IVF with one difference. Right after we sent her husband's sperm into her egg, we're also sending a little bit of protein and instruction for a gym surgery. A Chinese physicist, he is sparking some global outrage and debate today over claims that he created the world's first genetically edited baby. It's very disturbing, it's inappropriate. Oh, this is huge. This provocative claim is shaking up the science community and constitutes an untraditional approach to reproductive science. In cases where the potential risk First of all, this technology was not considered to be safe. There's still a lot of technical problems that need to be solved before you would take the step and offer this to women, actually. Another reason why this was so controversial was the way it was done. I mean, uh, the way the clinical trial was performed, there's a lot of uh, discussion on it, whether this was actually done properly, and uh, there's general consensus that it was not done uh, well. But in the end, if the proper research uh, will be done on the efficacy and the safety of this technology, then it will open up new ways of treating patients. So you can imagine that some of these new possibilities will be more controversial than others. You can imagine that less people will have a difficulty with the fact that you will use gene editing to prevent genetically affected children. In that way, prevent uh, diseases in children. Of course, it will be more 
controversial or uh, at least will lead to more discussion if you use gene editing to enhance humans. And then, for example, it will be more controversial if you enhance them and give them to to totally new properties. Like, for example, somebody previously uh, suggested to enhance people and make them more radiation resistant so they can survive in space better. Or enhance people and make some mutations in there that some people of us already have, uh, such as a mutation in the CCO5 gene, which make you in the end HIV resistant. I'm Melina, I'm a researcher of the Research Foundation of Flanders, currently working at Leuven University. Um, I'm focused on the patient-centeredness of women's health and uh, for the past couple of years I had a collaboration with uh, the University of Amsterdam uh, studying the um, actually the acceptability and responsible clinical implementation of uh, certain new uh, exciting innovations in our field. When you think about introducing uh, new treatments, you have to think about all the characteristics of these treatments. And the two most important are their safety and their effectiveness. If you look at the acceptance of innovations if in, among the general public, uh, besides patients, um, we know that also the acceptance among the general public is um, rather high. They are interested, but um, the majority of the general public wants uh, a form of regulation for the clinical implementation of, of innovations. So in general we have many innovations coming towards us and all these innovations will in the end translate into new medical treatments that will be offered to patients. I have no doubt about it because patients actually want these treatments and doctors want to help their patients. But there's also a big industry behind it that is developing these innovations and uh, providing a big push in that, uh, which in itself is good. And what we learned from uh, uh, in the last 20 years of in reproductive medicine, that the industry developing them is not doing the research on the safety and effectiveness. And that should be avoided. So we should do that research. But if we do it, yeah, then uh, we live in exciting times and we have many new opportunities lying uh, out there.